Hi there. So last time I talked about Trotskyism very briefly, and I took your suggestions in the comments. So I've got on my list now the Democratic Confederalist in Syria, Revolutionary Catalonia, the CNT, places where libertarian socialism has existed, Star Trek socialism, social democracy, mutualism, Rojava, and the differences between Squidwardism and Pinguism. I promise I will get to all of them eventually. Even probably the last one, it just takes a few years to produce each one of these. I also got a suggestion for Maoism, and here we are. Marxism, Leninism, Maoism is a theory developed and named after this guy, although it was only coined as a term after him. Maoism is both a departure and a continuation of Marxism, Leninism, which is also authoritarian socialism, but also isn't really authoritarian socialism since nobody calls themselves that. Maoism can be summed up in five points. The new democracy, the cultural revolution, the law of contradiction, the mass line, and protracted people's war. New democracy is basically laying the foundation for a socialist society and restructuring the old society into the new. The most important part of new democracy is that several classes are working together to fight the old order and establish a new one. Then there's the cultural revolution, which more or less aims to do what the new democracy does socially. It acknowledges that the divide between the proletariat and the bourgeoisie does not simply disappear after the revolution, but survives socially, and therefore unity only comes through the combined struggle of various other classes. So not only do the bourgeoisie survive after the revolution, but so does their ideological domination, in the sense that the modern world was built for the bourgeoisie, for the bourgeoisie, for bourgeoisie thought. So even after a successful revolution, the class struggle continues for the proletariat. They need to build the new ideological structure of society in their image. There's also a thing called the law of contradiction, which is kind of confusing, but kind of cool when you get it. Basically, things can be understood as a whole, not just from one perspective. Now, here's where it gets trippy and philosophical. Things have both an essence and a being, or in other words, they have the way that they look and the way that they are, and sometimes those two things are in conflict. For example, how the United States appears to be a democracy but is closer to an aristocracy, or how like how like you can't really tell the difference between cornflakes and frosted flakes until you taste them. Yeah, let's go with that analogy. Or in other words, as Mao said, the other does not exist in the objective world, but the material conditions to set it up exist. For example, the waterfall exists in the natural world. Without setting up an opposite, one cannot create something from the waterfall. Building a dam is setting up an opposite to the waterfall. Then energy can be created to generate electricity. Things are always struggling, in contradiction, but this struggle creates unity, which also creates struggle again, and then unity again, and so on. Then there's the thing called the mass line. More like the ass line, am I right, ladies? Basically, the party leaders take their cue from the masses. Imagine that the leaders are holding a giant suggestion box, and everybody can put all the suggestions they want inside. Suggestions can also just be general complaints and things that need to be fixed. And the party goes and decides on a good solution, and then brings the ideas of the people back to them in practice. And then the people decide whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, how it could be reformed, and so on. The idea of the mass line is that the people should have all the power. The leaders, quote unquote, are just the ones who actually see the actions out, but they're not above the people in any way. In fact, the opposite is true. Then there's this thing called the protracted people's war. Protracted people's war is a three-stage method of waging war on the old order consisting of strategic defense, strategic equilibrium, and strategic offense. In other words, they're winning, we're tied, we're up by 10 points, in that order. There's also three magic weapons that are the party, the United Front, and the People's Army, all leading the struggle against the state and capitalism. Protracted People's War also takes a different form everywhere it's practiced because no two situations are the same. 
Another thing about protracted people's war is that it is the antithesis of conventional military tactics. Usually, war is waged by trying to demoralize the enemy as soon as possible, but in PPW, the focus is keeping the people's morale high enough to sustain a long revolution, actually several long revolutions, long enough for victory, which might take a while. In summary, new democracy, cultural revolution, Law of Contradiction, Mass Line, Protracted People's War.